What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm off to a little repair job today. Um, it's a door and a frame in a little walled garden. The frame's gone a bit rotten and the, the bottom of the door has basically disintegrated. So should make for a, a pretty interesting video how I uh, repair this door and splice in the frame. I'm gonna do two videos on this one. A uh, shorter, sort of five minute long one that'd be great for Instagram and Facebook and then a more in depth one for the more hardcore fans out there that want to see how things are actually done. So I hope you enjoy it, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Right, so this is the door we're going to be attacking. As you can see it's quite a chunky frame. Just open it up here, bit of a wind tunnel. It's about a four inch thick frame by I'd say about uh, just over four and a half inches deep and it's a full arch in that thickness so in terms of whether to repair or replace this frame we're going to go with a repair. So this is the worst bit of damage on the frame in the bottom corner here. So we're going to replace this section, cut it off up here somewhere. So. As I've just got here, I'm just going to have a quick look at how the door fits within the opening so that when I cut it to bits, I can make any adjustments necessary. I'm going to take the door away and repair it. I'm also going to cut a section of this frame off so that I can make a repair section while I'm in the workshop. So I've got a piece to put back in when I come to fit the door back on. And finally, before we leave, we're just going to board the opening up. I'm going to toss your fixing through into the wall in case this frame's going to drop when I take that piece away. I don't know if you can see, but this frame sits in a reveal, so it's not as thick on the outside as it is on the inside, so there's a brick reveal there. So I can't just stick a sabre saw or a reciprocated saw through the frame to take a slice off of it because you damage the brickwork on the outside. So what I'm going to do is use a multi tool and chop my way into it. So there we go, we can use that piece there, we clamp that back together and take the measurements for the frame section that we're going to replace. In terms of the plan for repairing this, I'll make this section in the workshop, what I might do is make it in two parts, so because it's so deep and trying to get one cut on this, it's not going to be a great joint, so I'm going to cut up the length of this piece here to the appropriate size of the part that I make in the workshop. Then I'm going to cut it back at an angle, which I can do with the multi-tool quite accurately. And then cut this piece here back again at, four, at 90 degrees. And what that will enable me to do is put this back piece in first and seal that in. And then glue the other piece to both components so we've got some strength through the second piece in the front here to strengthen these two bits together and we get a, a nice locked joint. Right, so we're back in the workshop, got the door on the bench. She's quite heavy, so a bit of a struggle. But what we're going to do, I did this repair as a temporary uh, a couple of months ago when the door actually fell off its hinges and moved this up so it actually still swung and they could use it until they had time to come back and do a proper job on it. What we're going to do is cut these rotten styles off higher up and make a similar repair to like I said I'd do on the frame so we're going to step a joint in there so we've got some strength through the repair and might have to make a couple of new panels for the bottom there depending on what they come out like um, 
joints a new uh, munting in there if it needs it. Same on the other door style as well. Get some strength through that. Tenon up a new bottom rail and put a complete new bottom rail in. And that should repair the bottom of the door nicely. The other side of this, so this is the outside, the road side, is fairly good and fairly clean. Sort of what you'd expect from an old door. These joints are all quite nice and strong, just needs a, a good bit of decorating. So on this side of the door, we're pretty good. We don't need to do much more than repair the bottom of it. If we turn it over, so on this side, the customer's just sprung on me a little bit. He might like to change this. So what I might do is, is just get another one of these blocks out, pretty much exactly the same, but out of some Akoya, so it looks nice and clean. And I might just put a repair patch in where this latch has been chopped in so it looks a bit uh, a bit rough and ready like it's been chopped in with a carving knife. Um, he also said this wasn't very in keeping and didn't like the bolt so we've got to replace the hinges so I've got to go and buy some of them so we'll try and find a bolt that's going to be in keeping as well with that style of hinge. On the bottom again just going to repair them door styles like I said, new bottom rail. Whether this is going to be alright, I, I think it's quite rotten actually. As you can see, it will have soaked up that ingrain into that rail. So we're going to have to repair this munting as well. So I dare say we're going to have a couple of new panels in there completely and repair this style. So we've got our work cut out for a, a good day's work. So we'll get to work and start chopping it to bits. was about once. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to take an overall measurement and write these down. She's not in the best of shape as you can see. It's a shame to scrap the whole door and there's a lot of work in making a arch top door and frame like this and a lot of disruption to the old brickwork. So in this scenario, it's much, much better to do a repair than it is to replace the whole lot. It's taken off a lot, did it? So I'm gonna cut the bottom side with the multi-tool up at 45 degree angle so that you cut it at a 45 degree angle when you're splicing so that any rainwater that comes down the style, if the joint opens up, it's not going to run into the door or sit on it. It's designed so that it will run out through the joint. And then we're going to halve that style and we're going to have another 45 degree cut in this direction here like this. I'm just going to use a bit of 4x2 and I've just cut off and clamped that to the door and cut that 45 degree. I think that's kind of shot.
too bad, I won't be able to salvage some of that. Still, have to cut that one back a little bit more. Just got another twenty mil. Now we've got our door prepped for the new component. As you can see here, it's a comedy door at the minute with just a top half left. Start measuring up and make a list of what we need. I'm going to make this style section up out of two pieces of timber. Because I'll have one piece that's planed, will sit on this milled surface here, cut at 45, and I'll glue it to the other piece that sits underneath it. So we need two pieces at half thickness of the overall thickness of the door. So we are at 26 mil on that piece. And I guess this piece is going to be slightly less, so it's 24. Just needs a little bit of pairing off that bottom edge. I'm just going to use the workbench to keep the door style edge nice and straight. So I've got my other piece of wood there to sit underneath, and this bit is going to sit on top like that. So that's my reference. And these pieces of timber are wider than the door style. So we're just gonna work along this inside edge, keeping that nice and straight. And I can trim this off afterwards to suit what I need. We'll get in there, we'll get in there. style nice and straight we can check the measurement across here to the other one as well when we do the rail let's just make a note of where they belong so that's the right hand outside that's the left hand outside turn the door over and repeat I've not even touched that one, and she's bonny. Oh, why? Right, so I'm going to clamp the door down to the bench to make sure it's fully 
onto it. I'm going to push both of these tight up to them cuts. Make sure it's straight. Now I can just put a tick mark on here. And I can glue them together, so I can take them away now. I can glue that together using them tick marks as a reference. So I'll put a domino quickly in at them points to keep these faces aligned. So that's my inside edge. And then they're going to line up perfectly within that joint now that I've set it all up. Let me know if you've tried this PU glue in a can, you know, like a spray foam can. I'm quite new to it, so I'd love to know what you think about it. Getting on quite well with it at the minute. It's quite economical for gluing up um, boards and things together, like in a run, if you don't use the glue joint block, because you can just squirt down the whole face and it's applied and already spread out. Whereas if you use a uh, PU in like a cartridge tube, you end up applying a lot more than you actually need into the joint. So that's probably too much to glue that together. Because if we spread that out, it actually goes quite far. definitely a cheaper alternative for bigger glue ups and it's a lot quicker to apply so if you've got a lot of mortise holes to fill one squirt of that like you saw on the domino there just fills the entire hole quite quickly and we all want the hole filling Put a load of glue where I don't need it there, which is not good. Didn't need to glue that bit. Clamp that together. I don't need an awful lot of pressure because it does squeeze out quite well. It's a quick burst. I mean, that was probably too much, but there you go. Got glue on every bit of that mortise hole of that domino. It's the same if you've used a mortise and tenon. It's in there, done. It's as quick as that, and you spread glue all over that joint. So it's really good for gluing up doors and, and stuff like that, because you apply the glue in about two or three minutes, and the rest of your time is then just assembly. Looks like it goes pretty far. So if you've not tried it, it's gonna take you some getting used to but I'm not quite getting on well with it at the minute. This is the bottom rail, I've got to glue the two bits together to make this up. So I'm just going to plane this down to size. I glued them up slightly oversized. So I'll prep that while the other bits are drying. The joy of PU glue is that you can do all this in the same day. Whereas traditionally a door repair like this, you'd have to set it dry in with like a cascamite with a fast hardener in it. You'd really have to work methodically to, to know which bits needed gluing two or maybe three times to make a component up and start with them bits and, and work through it really methodically. Whereas PU glue sets in about 15 minutes, uh, it sort of made life a lot easier. Right, let's let that cure a little bit more before I stick it on the planer. So while we wait for that lot to dry, about 10 minutes or so, I'm going to make the panels up out of a bit of tricoil sheet. Rat, 9A 
take one. Cuts him off. So I'm just going to stick this tenon in. I'm going to use a 16mm tenon, but they've used an 80 and that Muntin piece needs tenoning into the old mortise hole. So I've got to set the tenoner up twice. Tenon, 18mm tenon going into the old mortise here. So that's cut. So I'm just going to tenon the bottom, I'm going to tenon it square and then just cut the 45s on the miter to save putting a double cutter into the tenoner. Mark the mortises on now. Measure for thirty-six down. Do -do -do -do. Both sides. With them pushed home. That's the top of my rail. Two hundred is the rail. I've got a two two five, so I can cut it to size. So if we work off a of two hundred, want thirteen mil of setback. 200 mil rail. And I'm going to do 45, 90, 180. Yeah, if we do 42 mil tenons and a 50 mil haunch and a 42 mil tenon, should look nice. Put these two together. 
like this. Square them lines over. There me two mortises. Square that over the face really. Some wedge room. That the wrong way around. That's the big one. That's the small one. Stick that on the mortiser. We also need to mortise. This is the bottom rail. Bit of wiggle room. Mortis that as well. I'm going to set up a gauge for that because it's quite a tall rail. This gauge smells right funky. Absolutely everything altered from my perfect setup. Just going to machine the grooves for the panel to go in first. Fourteen. So now everything's machined. Just need to notch the haunches in the tenons and we can assemble it. How exciting. So we'll just tick the mortise locations across onto the tenon, allowing a millimetre on the on the bottom edge. That one's tight, it's a cut in line with the pencil mark, and this one is a, a millimetre gap. Same on both sides. So 32 mil. Send the depth of the haunch from that shoulder. Put it marked off the tenon at 32. Square these lines over and cut them out. That's our tenant, and there are two horn trees. <laughs> Right, moment of truth. The workshop looks like a absolute bombs hit it. So let's hope it was worthwhile. Uh, face, that's the face. Put that the wall style on there. Oh, 
simple. Let's mold these panels up and get this bad boy glued together. Right, so let's glue this together. So I'm going to be working face down so that everything can be clamped to the workbench to keep everything nice and straight and flush in line with the door. So we end up with a straight door and not a kick on these, these toes that I've scribed in. So I'm just put an extractor bag with a polythene on the bench so it doesn't actually stick to the bench itself. So that means I can get loads of glue in there and not have to worry about that. Um, yeah, otherwise I think we're pretty much ready. I've given everything a quick sand um, and ready to glue up. Just make sure we put the panel the right way around. I've not fully tested the panels all the way home into the openings and put the rails on because I don't think I'd ever get it apart. They're quite a good fit. So fingers crossed it all goes well. tight panel gaps. We'll let it dry and see what the other side looks like. See what metal we can find.
three equal nails. Now did you know, a face patch repair like this is called a Dutchman. I'm going to get a t-shirt made up saying he's in the shed doing a Dutchman. Should be 72. 72. Right. Here's an equal bit I made earlier. Right, not a good day today. Just gonna do a little bit more before I head home. So let's get this bit out. That's a 55, that's a 60. We want a moulding on the 55. That's the one that's gonna have the 45 screen cut. in China. They really need a new rebater. But they're so cheap, I thought I'd order one just to see what turned up. It's actually pretty decent. I bought it really because of the carbide insert. But if I ever want to machine plywood or anything like that, I'm not wrecking my rebater. Machining like the glue edges tend to wreck the cutters quite quick. So I was just interested to see what actually turned up, if it turned up, and whether there was import taxes and stuff, but it took about six, probably eight weeks to turn up. But it was all good. Yeah, we got there in the end. We've got another mould in. It's about the same.
Right there we go, all done, finished, ready for the decorator to come and work his magic on it and make it look really nice. So a quick rundown of what we've been and done. Got new hinges on top and bottom because the old ones were quite rotten. Had to patch in behind the top hinge because it had been let in too much with the old hinge. That was a bit of an unexpected repair. I thought the new hinges would slip onto the old hook and band hook so that had to improvise a bit of wood out the van to, to make that repair. 
we've got a new bottom to the jam on that left hand side on the hinge side so the prevailing weather obviously hits that on the outside of the door there so that's why that had rotted we've got a new bottom to the both styles new mountain rail two new panels and a bottom rail we've done a patch in here so I don't know if you can see it a patch there where there was a long bolt and it had rotted in behind the long bolt and a patch in here where this was sat because it looked like it had been chopped out quite roughly so I've patched that we have also done a little patch up here on this bolt so where the old coach bolt had been sunk into the wood and rotted away we had patch that in as well and the new coach bolt is in a different position as well so that needed needed a little patch in there and then another Dutchman other than that that's all we did on the door and just a, a lick of paint before we leave ready for the decorator it's got a bit of seal he's not going to be here for a, probably a couple of weeks but it doesn't look too bad for a I've just spoke with the customer and he said it's at least 30 years old this door so it was in here when they moved in and was looked fairly old then so could be could be up to 50 years if not more 50 years old so it, it's doing all right it's a it's a lovely piece it's nice to save it rather than replace it have a quick look at the repair on there so you just need to, a bit of pointing, so carry on this pointing that somebody's done recently down to the floor and it can be pointed around the, the bottom as well because the Akoya is not going to rot. And this side like I said is, is pretty good, it's not been touched even though it's in the same sort of frontage this side's catching all the wind and all the weather so that's why that's rotted away. So if you have a look down the door, try and get the camera in, we can see the repair is nice and straight and in line. And if we close it, the frame and the door meet perfectly at the bottom, so there's no kick on the frame or the door. Hope you've enjoyed this one remember to click subscribe and i'll catch you next time